la ayahuasca es una planta muy celosa. just seen a dirty gem of a movie. You've just seen Icarus a Vision. Uh, I'm Victor Fraga from Dirty Movies. We strongly believe that cinema is a tool for personal liberation, or social liberation, political liberation. This film fits in so incredibly well with our principles, with our beliefs. I've got Arbo Palmer here who's come all the way from New York for, for the screenings. This is our third and final screening. I've got Maisa here, who has found this film, who has helped us to identify a film which fits in so well with, with what we believe in. Uh, we're going to be asking uh, a couple of questions. We'll pass the microphone over to you. We want to find out a little bit more about uh, about Icarus and Vision. Uh, first of all, well, thank you very much, Abu, for being here. Thank you very much, Maisa, for working so hard on this. Um, before, before I ask Abu a question, I do have just one single question for him. I'd, I'd like to ask Maisa, what is it, uh, how is it that she's come across this, this dirty gem which really deserves a lot more attention than it's been getting and which we will hopefully be seeing across Europe very soon. So I, uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I work as a film critic um, for the movies and other platforms and I was um, trying to find interesting movies uh, under the philosophy of Herzog, which is uh, see what you haven't seen before uh, which is unusual, and then I I saw the movie, but I forgot. I wrote about the movie, and I forgot for six or seven months. And then Victor asked me to well, we need to screen movies. And then I realized that Abu, the producer, would be going to the same film, fest, film festival that I was going to, and we met. Uh, but I think that the guideline for me to choose this movie. And the idea that once again, watching for the third or fourth time, I realized is the, um, the experience of ayahuasca. Although it's a common experience because everyone is together and one is helping each other, I think that the most important thing is the detachment. See, the experience that she calls, she tries to communicate with her lover far, uh, but she only gets to her own path when she finally detached herself uh, and it's her own way. Uh, I don't know if I connected with the idea, but this is how I feel movies. Yeah. We, are, we are here all together, but we have to detach ourselves to, to connect with films. Yeah. Obviously, it's a film about spirituality, ayahuasca. How many of you have actually done ayahuasca, if I may ask you? How many of you have taken it? Well, we've got three or four people. What? Three? How, wait, wait, try this again. How many? <laughs> one. We had, we had one hand. Can we? We're gonna we're gonna get a hovering microphone to you. This is not working, by the way. Get this one. Get this one. Mm -hmm. 
My, my experience was in Sao Paulo, uh, in San Design, in a home of uh, Glauco. Uh, Glauco was a, a home in Utrecht. To me, it was very, very powerful, deep force, stranger, I don't know. I was in a uh, key moment in my life, and then uh, I took it, sent to the uh, ayahuasca. To me, it was not incredible. I never uh, experienced uh, things like that in my life, even with my Well, it's okay. It's okay. I think you should stop while you're ahead. Well, let's hope for some very exciting questions from you guys. So please don't be shy. Tell us what you like, what you didn't like about the film. Tell us. Abu would be would love to answer your questions. Is there anyone? Okay. Well, I do have a question for Abu. Um, Abu, I've seen a lot of films. Hallucinogenic material is very difficult to depict. Mm. How, when you see things in a different state, how do you translate that inch on, onto the silver screen? I've never taken ayahuasca. I've taken other things, other dodgy things. <laughs> I'm not going to go into details. But I'd like to ask you about the creative process of transposing a psychedelic, a hallucinogenic experience into the silver screen, into a pixeled image. Can you tell us a little bit about that creative process? Yeah, so, so you know, there, there's an aesthetic for psychedelics that's been around since the 60s and, and, and probably a lot of people have already seen that as patterns. Blah, blah. And so we wanted to get away from that and that was part of the, uh, part of the goal, the aesthetic goal of the film is to try and reinvent the language of um, showing images that are hallucinations. And we very much thought about hallucinations as not just something that, that you have um, in abnormal situations, but we were thinking of as something more like a hallucination perception continuum, right? So you're, you're all the time you're perceiving stuff, and, and, and there are different ways in which visions uh, and images come into your head. And in the West, hallucinations are pathologized, right? You get... You get medicated for it. You get uh, you get labeled for it. You get you, you become psychotic, and so there are all these ways in which hallucinations are 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 deemed aberrations of normal perceptive uh, states. And we didn't we wanted to get away from that, and we didn't want to we wanted to find a way of making it part of the normal trajectory of your, of, of your perceptive life. So, so, you know, the goal of, of taking a film into a state, taking an audience into a state of hallucination through the film was for us to get you to the point where a woman walks out into the jungle from an elevator and that feels totally normal. Right? <laughs> so... Um, so, so, so that was that was essentially the goal. Get get to the point where slowly you build up to a state where alternative realities are actually perfectly uh, normal realities. Um, the Shipibo say that the ayahuasca is 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 the television of the jungle. You know that that's their saying. Right? Ayahuasca is a te- so we use that as a kind of the trope through which we wrote and. And, and made the film, so everything that is, um, uh, and, and, and that, that means that, that ayahuasca is a technology, right? This is, this is a plant, and, and you can't just think of it as nature, it's, it's a plant that's been developed and used uh, and, and cultivated um, a, as a way to, to diagnose, as a way to see, as a way to, to create different ways of seeing. So we took that idea of ayahuasca as a technology and ran it through the entire film. So what, what you see is, 
is all the different ways in which the West uses technologies to create images that enter your head, right? You, you have, you have uh, medical imaging and microscopes, you've got scientific imaging, you've got, you've got video games, you've got cinema, you've yep. got theater, you've got all the, all the different uh, technologies that create hallucinations for all of you sitting here including what you <laughs> went through for the past hour and a half. Right? So, and, and, and that was what we tried to run through the entire film. Not, not as a contrast, not to say these are, these are uh, different, these are different, but to think of them as part of the same continuum of, of image production in your head. Um. There's a question over there. Yeah, it, w it wasn't a moment. You know, I mean, all these origin stories somehow. Everybody somehow thinks that there should be an origin story here, and all origin stories are arbitrary. They're somebody's um, interjection into a process and say, okay, here, this is where it started. But all origins are somebody's story about where something started. There's no, there's no real true origin. So um, I can give you mine. Uh, it starts with it, it, it's a very personal film, and some people don't know the full story. But but um, it had to do with with Leo uh, being diagnosed with cancer, and every anybody who's been through that long, arduous, and painful process knows that cancer patients try. I mean, they they go through you know the corridors of chemo and the halls of Western medicine, but they try everything else under the sun. Um, amongst the things that people try, uh, you'll find shamanism, you'll find uh, ayahuasca, you'll find psychedelics, because those, those are other ways to address what's coming. It doesn't mean that there's a cure, it just means that there's another way to deal with the process. So, so Leo and I um, got involved with this early on, before there was a film, uh, we, we, a lot of our artwork before this dealt with shamanism, dealt with medical imaging. Dealt with so a lot, of, a lot of the images that you see here, for example, were works from our past um, that, that we had done and, and Leo put back into, into the film. Um, and sh and, and so, so that, was, that, was, that was how we got introduced into thinking about what it means to see things that you can't see. Right. How do you? How, do, how does an MRI machine work to see to show you things and, and give you permission to see things? That you, and what are the cultural permissions to see, and and what are the technological ways to see something that you don't see? That, that's where it all started. And shamanism is partly about that: is to show you something that you're not allowed to see otherwise. Um, and that so that was kind of the origin. And then and then at some point, Leo and Matteo. Went, went to Peru, um, once we got introduced to ayahuasca and shamanism, went to Peru just because Leo was like that and she wanted to pursue all the way into whatever it was she was into, all the, all the way to the very, the very origin of it. And, and when they went there and saw what was happening, they said, we want to make a film. And when Leo says, I want to make a film, a film happens. Um, I want to do something. Something happens. So that, that's that's sort of how. It, of course, the process is, you know, two and a half years and so on. But but that's that, that was that was the origin. Um, that was the story. Abu. Yes. About the process of uh, making this film, because um, I know the Italian actor is very famous. So how was the the cast and and and, and, and the local people? Uh, can you tell me about? So the Shipibo members that you saw on, on screen were people that we got involved with along the way. And Le again, Leo was very good at, um, or, or, or managed very quickly to, to connect with a lot of the, the Shipibo 
uh, women who are artists, right? She, who, the, ones, the ones who do all the patterns that you see are women, and, and the ones who, who draw, the ones who, who, who make the... Uh, um, who make all 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 the all the fabric? Who make all the drawings? And so she started exchanging material with them. So it was an exchange between artists, and also to recognize that the shamans themselves were artists in in, in the middle of all this. So it, so it started with that, and then and then it started with deep friendships that that were cultivated with Arturo, who's in the film. You know the young the young shaman. Um, we ended up going with 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 his family, the mother to their, their hamlet up the Ukayali River. And, and so there was a friendship and there was an exchange that, that started before there was a film. And that, that, that worked itself into the film. And it was, it was very much uh, thinking, okay, you know, th there's something there that, that, that just needs to uh, be re-represented. Re uh, a, a lot of the a lot of the scenes in the film were already shot. Some like I have images and videos that we shot over the you know before before there was a film that we shot just uh, casually. So th this was in a way that everything was scripted, but but everything already existed, right? Just through our experiences. So it was very much an experiential thing. The the Shipibo were not actors. They were all doing everything that they do. The, the shamans were shamans. The artists. Uh, the women were doing whatever they were doing. Um, the foreigners were brought in just for that. So there's there's an Italian actor who's who's well, well known, Filippo Timi. There's uh, but there's a range of people there. There's a tailor who is you know just part of the scene. There. There's a number of people re recruited uh, on site. Um, so it, 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 it was everything was scripted and improvised at the same time. Question here at the front. Gentleman over there. Thanks for a fascinating film. Can I ask a rather prosaic question? Can you speak a bit closer to the microphone? Don't expect a prosaic answer. Sorry, I'm actually found living in Spain for that setup because you've got six very modern buildings. You've got running water, electricity, you've got uh, communications. So they're actually found it in this thing. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand that. The village, the village that was shot. The village. That yeah. At. Yeah. Who found it and who's paying for it? Oh, I see, I see. The, the, the center. The center, center. I see, yeah, yeah. You've got running water, you've got electricity, you've got all the facilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. happening? Is that the government, uh, yeah. Western finance companies? Yes, yes. Well, all, certainly yeah. not a bunch of natives, is it? <laughs> so what are we looking at? Then? Well, what's the truth behind it? Yeah. A bunch of natives. Is that what you said? Yes, yes. I mean, mm. you know, obviously that's not the people. People, are people unlike you. Yeah. Oh, so uh, who's actually paying for it? Um, Western tourists. N yes, it's it's actually you know the British National Health that's 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 funding yeah, all, 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 all of that. Um, I, I, it, yeah, I, it's a very very strange question the way you ask it, but I'm I'm going to answer it my own way. It's it's, it's uh, um, I, I'm going to say very simply that the cent these centers are set up. These are new these are new centers. They're not centers that were. Uh, that have existed uh, historically. They, they were obviously developed in order to cater to an influx of foreigners, um, Westerners and South Amer white South Americans who come in to take advantage of, of, of some of the possibilities. Uh, ayahuasca has been, you know, is, is, an old, is an old plant that's been used for for many 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 years, but it's always evolved. It's not not it's not like there's a tradition that's static, right? Um, it, it's always evolved, and this is one more iteration of that of that adaptation to the setting. And this is one of the oldest centers that's been set up in this way. Uh, when the, was the it sorry. When was it yeah yeah I'm getting there I'm getting there. Oh, it's very yeah, 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 yeah. 
So this was the, 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 first, the first center that was set up in order to cater to Western um, and, and South American uh, ayahuasca healing uh, uh, was in Tarapoto that was set up maybe about 25 years ago. This one came right on the heels of that. It was set up by the guy you saw in the film, the old man, uh, and his French apprentice. Um, about 18 years ago, something like that. Uh, I, I don't know what you mean by running water. There's no running water there. We, you know, yeah, I mean, it's running water in the sense that there's a well and then, and then we made some plastic pipes and we, they made some plastic pipes. That, you know, it's a pump and it goes out. Electricity, there's a generator. And so, so these are things that, you know, people, people adapt. I'm, I'm not sure what you think. Pe people, use, people use whatever is available to make, to make things work. And this is just how, you know, you set up a center. You, 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 you take whatever you can. There's a generator. You turn it on. It, 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 it makes water flow. Right? It makes electricity flow, but, but and then you set up, and then you set up the satellite, and, 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 and then we and have so, so yeah. you know, it's, it's not a yeah. Do tourists go there? I think is a question. Do tourists is like the American tourists? Do yeah. American tourists come there? Let me just. Can I go to like Amazon with a trip there and something? Uh, I mean, it, yes, you saw that people go there. There's the, the you know pe people. People not only go there, but the shamans are... So this, this, this is a cosmopolitan thing. I mean, you're imagining... You probably have some... some, some I don't know what kind of imagination you have of, 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 of indigenous folks, but, but they live you know, in the contemporary world, right alongside the rest of us. Um, and and, and they, 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 you know, they, they, Guillermo, Guillermo probably has more frequent flyer miles than most of you in this room. <laughs> right. He's 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 been he, he he flies to Moscow. He's flown to Moscow or Saint Petersburg to Paris and to Long Island all the time to do ceremonies. He's not he's not you know he's not some like uh, hick from from Sheffield or something, right? He's he's I, I'm not sure that he's rich. I'm not, I didn't I didn't say translated into money. I, that's not what I said. Right. But 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 he does travel and he does get exposed and he exposes other people and he's not there in order to make in order to turn life into profit and that, 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 that there's a slightly different kind of orientation to it doesn't mean that he doesn't want to have you know Abu let, let, let me yeah, help yeah, sorry, let me sorry. help her. <laughs> just one thing that we, we have time for one question to wrap up one what? Just very one? little thing that I think. Uh, there is a message here between Western and, and people that you think that live in the forest and don't go out. That there is an exchange in this film. So the Shama is sick as well as the character is sick. So they both need each other and they both grow. They don't stay in the same state because they share. And I think that's the message, behind, at least for me, that's the message of I Cruise of Vision, the share. Okay. Let me take that. Okay. We have time for one more question. I hate to say this, but they have very strict licensing regulations in here, so we do have to wrap up, unfortunately. And I have uh, 15 more questions I'd like to ask Abu, but unfortunately I won't be able to. So there's someone in there, and then we'll wrap up. Right. And thank you very much for uh, also being here because I think, uh, especially what you said about imaging afterwards, it's kind of helping to put a lot of things in the movie in a little more perspective. Uh, one other related question is sometimes there were images of um, like the, the deforestation, right? Um, and also, maybe it's a link, to also the, the, the freshwater uh, dolphins, mm -hmm. which I think. I've always been quite fond of other animals and I know they're really endangered. So maybe could you tell us a little bit about, about what that element of the movie was, was there for and mm -hmm. uh, how, how you see that sort of infringement on, 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 on the native environment. Yeah. And again, thanks for being here. Yeah. So, yeah, so there, there are, you know, in a way there are two sick patients in the film. You know, there, there's, there's Angelina 
right? And then there's there's the Amazon. So there's 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 the human and there's the environment. Um, and that, that that was very much part of the way we experienced the Amazon. Is also very much the part of we wanted how we wanted to represent uh, and work with with that context. Um, the, the 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 river dolphins, the pink dolphins, are uh, very strange creatures that have made it. And I mean, they are they are endangered. They are part of uh, uh, a, a, a very strange ecology. And I mean, the Amazon. L listen, the Amazon is the Amazon is the Amazon basin is the basin of life. Right? The Amazon basin has the largest deposit of carbon in the entire world uh, and uh, on Earth. Uh, it has the largest diversity of species. We, we don't actually know how many species there are in the Amazon. Uh, there are estimates. People have all the estimates are actually, you know, they're not by observation; they're by calculation. So there's anywhere between two to ten million species uh, in the Amazon. There's like 400 billion trees in the Amazon. So, so it's like it's just this this uh, basin of life that keeps bubbling up. Um, and when the shit goes down, this is where the rest of life is going to come flourish back in. Um, but yeah, we, we, we use the dolphins because they're part of the um, mythology of the Shipibo also. The, the, they're part of what uh, uh, the higher life ends up going to. They have, they have very good hearing. They take humans back down there uh, and train them. So th there's, a, there's a whole mythology around the dolphins that we didn't really develop in this film, but we wanted to indicate because there's, there, there's many complexities. Um, but, but you know, those river dolph dolphins are are endangered and they're dying out. They're, they, they've been killed, but uh, it's not just the hunting that is killing them. It's it's oil exploration. It's mining. It's capitalism eating up the life world of the Amazon. Uh, and poisoning the waterways that, that's killing not just dolphins. I mean, those are, those are sort of the cute animals that everybody can point to, <laughs> but there's, there's an entire uh, realm of life that's being devastated uh, because we have to go, f or, or corporations have to go in there and find and turn life into profit. Um, and and in, in, the, in the process, not, you know, and it's not just, it's not just uh, the animals that are endangered, but there's this whole ecosystem. And, and all sorts of rifles, and, and, and you know the people who fight for this, the she people who are fighting for territorial sovereignty, for ecological sovereignty, uh, get often um, assaulted. They get death threats. The guy who was in the film, who was a um, who was the administrator, Ronald, who, who checked people in, uh, he's now the head of the she people council, the she people nation, and he's got a death threat on his head right now. Right? So, so it indicates a fight. It, it indicates a fight that goes beyond the screen. It, it indicates a fight that needs to continue and a struggle that needs to be fought um, beyond just dolphins. Yeah. Now, obviously, there are a lot of struggles and here, here are personal struggles, political struggles, social struggles. There's a lot we'd like to talk about. I strongly recommend you go to our website, dmovies.org, and you take a look at a piece Abu has written himself about uh, about filming in the jungle, about the, ju the, the challenges we're in, um, meeting smugglers and so on. Um, we could talk about that quite a lot, but unfortunately, we do have to wrap it up. We do have London licensing regulations, so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you. I hope um, I hope these images will stay with you for a long time. I hope, uh, I hope Abu has managed to penetrate into your inner world uh, and vice versa. And once again, thank you very much, Abu. Thank you very much, Maiza. And thank you very much.